All right, we're into episode 42. And in this episode, we answer the burning question, who let the dogs out? Who? 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 Oh my God, is it who, who, who? I thought it was roof, roof. I, I am mind blown right now. Okay, there's a lot of exploratory things in episode 42. I did not know it was who, who, who. We are talking about pets in Toronto real estate. Yes, yeah. We're on the 17-minute mark if you want to get into it. That's where we start. But we also get into... Uh, we start by some food recommendations with uh, some how was your week and where did you eat. Yep. Then we get into news you can use. A couple. Maggie Ford comes up this week. That's it. And lastly, the meat and potatoes. 17 minute mark if you just want to get into the meat and potatoes. Enjoy the show. Enjoy. <laughs> hoo, 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 hoo. I did not know that. <laughs> Let's leave it there. Yeah. Welcome to the Toronto Living's Podcast. A conversation about all things Toronto with a focus on real estate, the culture, and of course, the food. I'm Mark Savelle. And I'm Joey Virgilio. And we're realtors with Sage Real Estate working together as a Toronto Living's team with a focus on helping you buy better, sell higher, and of course, having a little bit of fun along the way. Hey, Joey. Hey, Mark. Roof. <laughs> Was that, a, was that a dog sound? I, was, I, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> I, meow. <laughs> Maybe it's a little hint of what we're going to talk about oh, today. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Coco. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Is that a snake? Yeah. A slithery snake. <laughs> <laughs> um, welcome to episode 42. We're at episode 42. And we're talking about pets. Pets. And snakes, apparently. And snakes. <laughs> any pet that you can think of. What's the wildest pet you've had? I've, I've had? Yeah. Uh, nothing crazy. Pretty tame. A, a gerbil. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not crazy. Part, part. It's like like a six out of ten in the crazy side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you have the balls where they would run around in? No. Free reign. Oh, we had that. No, we put them. We would set up weird contraptions <laughs> and have them run in, and Laps? they always got out. Yeah. <laughs> like gerbil races. Gerbil races. That's sure. De- definitely legal, but uh, did, we did not place bets. <laughs> wink, wink. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, did you have birds? Uh, no, <laughs> I didn't. Actually, I didn't have a bird, but my cousins always had a bird. They're still alive to this day, Chicho. Oh, and the your cousin w- or the bird? The bird. <laughs> your cousin's not Chicho. The way that this no no. <laughs> the way that this bird got into their lives. I don't know if I should be sharing this, but the way that this bird got in their lives is they were driving. Uh, they were taking a road trip to Florida, and this bird <laughs> flew into their car, and then they just. Shut the doors and kept it and and drove. I don't. I don't think that's animal cruelty. I think it's meant to be. It was meant to be. Yeah. He's still living a good life over right? there. Yeah. <laughs> what type of bird is it? Uh, it's like a parrot. What? Yeah. They caught a parrot. <laughs> yeah, that's worth it. <laughs> Parrots are expensive. Are they? Yeah, and they live to like they live like a hundred years. Oh, this thing is. Yeah, yeah, they live a long time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our house used to be. Kind of Jumanji, I would say. I so see birds in your. Oh, in your we house. had birds. Yeah, yeah, we had, we had cockatiels. Okay, with the with the little thing, we had zebra finches. We started with four, and I think we ended with like twenty five. Because <laughs> zebra finches. Yeah, they're little little birds, and they would be breeding like wild. Okay. And uh, then we had this. We called it the Jesus bird. So we had a bird, and it died the day that the Pope died. Oh my God! So it's the Jesus bird. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, not really, but my mom called it the Jesus bird. <laughs> now here's the wild part. So she was running, we were younger, she was running to work uh, and the bird died and she didn't want to tell us. So she just put a, um, uh, a sheet over the cage so we wouldn't see it. And she's like, okay, guys, like, get off the school. We've got to talk <laughs> later on. The bird resurrected. Oh my God. Jesus bird. <laughs> That's the Jesus bird. <laughs> yeah. That's a well-suited name. <laughs> yeah. So, and then we stopped. There was no more birds after that. <laughs> they were like, enough. That's the only one you need. Yeah. <laughs> well, we had some dogs, some cats, and currently we don't have it. Me and Age don't have anything, but we had Chloe on the show, my dad's dog. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we always had dogs in our lives. Yeah, same here. Yeah, mainly dogs, and recently in the, in the <laughs> Roger, <cat world>. yeah, <laughs> Roger, <laughs> Roger, the psychotic cat, <laughs> was beautiful. He is a good looking cat. He is a good looking cat. I can't lie, I can't <laughs> lie but man, he is, he is uh, just <laughs> it's hard to deal with sometimes. 
<laughs> cool. Um, well, let's start off like we always do. How was your weekend? Where did we eat? Oh, we had some stuff this week. We did. We went to Maddie's Patties. Yeah. Yeah. Queen West. Queen West, Maddie's Patties, right by uh, right by Candy Factory. Right by our listing at Candy Factory, right by Trinity Bellwoods Park. That's right. Um, wait, right by the White Squirrel Espresso Bar, which we also went to. Which we also went to. Yeah, we'll say that for another. Stay tuned for that one. Yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so we went to Maddie's Patties. It was, uh, it was a really good burger. Patty wise, it was fantastic. Patty and sauce and just ratio of everything was on point. Yep. My only qualm is the the bun. I also share that sentiment. The bun was a little too CD for my liking. Oh, CD, sesame. I'm into. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't crazy about that, but I agree with you. It felt very flimsy the br- the bread, mm-hmm. and I made a comment about it. I think on Instagram or something like that. And shout out Jude V. Jude V. Jude V. Okay. He told me you're supposed to flip it upside down, so eat it unconventionally with the the thicker part of the patty at the bottom. Oh, right. That's a thing. Which okay. would make perfect sense because it's going to catch all that gooey goodness. Oh, instead of you having the grease pile at the bottom, when you flip it, it absorbs it all. I'm going to need to go back. I agree. Also, they need some signage to tell us that <laughs> <laughs> like, guys, you're doing it wrong. Flip it upside down. That would have been like a cool little thing to add. To yeah, that's, this. that's a good point. That's like, a good point. Or Jude just does it and found a hack that no one else knows about. I'm not sure. Also true. Yeah. But yeah. shout out Jude. Shout v. out Jude V. I'm yeah. going to give that another shot. Maddie's patties worth the, worth the trip. And like kind of expensive, but actually was far better than I expected it to be. Uh, yeah. Agreed. Cause okay. Slayer burger was like 50 bucks when we went there. Yes. And we got double patties obviously two patties <laughs> uh we got drinks and fries each like we weren't sharing and yeah. it was like 40 bucks yeah, yeah with yeah. tip i think like whatever no it did yeah. yeah both yeah exactly drinks yeah. fries and burgers and that patty was premium it was really good yeah like the actual the actual ground however it was done was yeah. done very right very good yeah, yeah. Shut it, out. Was, it wasn't a smash burger that was like pushed to the point of no return it right was, it was like it kept some some meat on the bone and it was wide it was a nice big patty it was yeah. like a pancake yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Burger cake, burger pancake. Um, cool. Uh, where else did you go this week? Okay, I went to a few places this week, actually. I'll make them quick, because yeah. I went to a few places. But Banya, Banya number two. Okay. I went to Banya number two in Richmond Hill. I had to shout it out. Do you know what Banya means? Bathroom? Yeah. <laughs> you know what number two means? <laughs> Interesting name, but whatever. It is what it is. Man. It was, uh, anyways, it's a, it's a cool spa that, that exists in Richmond Hill. Okay. Uh, and it's, uh, basically, it's got like, um, it's got steam room, cold plunge, hot plunge, or hot plunge. Um, yeah, there's a hot tub. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dry saunas, ice room or whatever. It's got like kind of all the stuff. Yeah. Really easy, simple setup. And like, yeah, it's definitely worth going. You pay 60 bucks when you get there Okay. and you can just stay Unlimited. The, whole, the whole day. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. So you go right at nine in the morning if you want and just, yeah. s- just really milk it. You can do the whole day there. Yeah. And there's food. Uh, and yes, the, one of the best parts is the fact that you can kind of take a break halfway through and just like get a meal. <laughs> yeah. Cause I find like after the ice baths, I'm hungry. Yeah, it, it really spikes the appetite. The like, metabolism's like firing. I could eat a truck. Like I'm just charged up and- a million percent. So we had uh, actually had a really weird soup. I forget the name of the soup. Okay. Uh, so I don't want to, I don't want to pretend I know it. What was in it? Uh, olives Oof. and Oof. chopped like dill pickles. Oh, that's so Eastern European parsley. Yeah. And there was a lemon in it. <laughs> yeah. Just throw a lemon in yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so good though. Okay. Uh, respect it, the hustle. Yeah. We went to, we went to the restaurant when it was closing. So they were like, mm. we can do soup quickly. And I was like, all right, let's just do that. But I highly recommend if you, if anybody's looking for like something in the spa realm, yeah. head to head to it because it's actually like, it's, it's a really nice spot. Um, and good for the soul, soup for the soul, soup for the soul and ice bath for the soul, <laughs> ice for the anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, um, bunny number two, the address if for those who look, it's 13, 11, no, uh, hundred one, three, one, one, zero <laughs> young street. <laughs> Just DM us. Yeah. We'll send you the link. <laughs> That'll work. How about that? Uh, how about you? Um, nothing really too exciting. I've been just kind of busy running around. No, I didn't. Nothing of, of worthy mention. Maddie's Patties was definitely my culinary highlight. I went to uh, New Gen Sushi on Bloor Street. That's my spot. Oh, yeah. I've been going there for 15 years. I ordered the same thing. Salmon set. I don't need a menu. I walk in. Two minutes later, I have a salmon set on my table. They just know. Yeah, okay. It, it is. <laughs> the, if you're into salmon sushi, it's the greatest I offerings st- in the city. I still got to try it. Yeah, it's, it's not like Michelin Mark potential. It's just... It's just, it's just a good food. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, I did go to my uh, my friend's house, and uh, I was with their kids this week, and we picked up a new subscriber. Oh, our youngest subscriber yet. Okay. I want to shout out Sevilla V. Sevilla V. No, Sevilla Z. I don't know why I said V. Okay. <laughs> Sevilla Z. Um, 
at the young age of six, okay, she's obsessed. Her and her brother Tristan are obsessed with uh, YouTube. Okay. And so I'm like, yo, I'm on YouTube. They're like, no, you're not. They didn't believe it. And I'm like, yeah, Auntie Adri's on YouTube too. And they're like, what? <laughs> How many subscribers do you have? Do you have a gold plaque? I'm like, yeah. They're like, what? I became the coolest guy in their lives. Lied to them like it was Santa Claus all day. And uh, so Sevilla's like, oh, I want to see the video. Uh, so her and Auntie Adri are looking at the, the interview with Adriana S., and they're kind of giggling and going back and forth. And I was like, what the heck is going on? So I get home, I check the subs, and we got one new sub. So we're at 1,099 subscribers, one away from 1,100. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I don't want to force Tristan at five years old to subscribe. I think he's got to naturally like us, but we're one away. And she left, I think, the greatest comment I've ever seen. Okay, let's hear it. Michael is a poo-poo pants. <laughs> I don't know who Michael is, but he's got poo poo pads. <laughs> I pinned that comment. I hearted it. I replied. I did whatever I could to support the algorithm because that is the greatest comment I've received so far. I support that. I support that 100%. Now, I think what she did was they call me Marcos, like a Greek god, which I'm not <laughs> Greek or a god, but somehow the name Marcos stuck. So every time they see me, it's Marcos, Marcos. And I think they were trying to say Marcos has poo poo pads. <laughs> Which, for the record, I don't and didn't that night. Um, but I think in voice dictation. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, no, no, I did not have poo poo pants. Yeah. Um, they thought, well, we're going to have espresso, so we might have poo poo pants. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, shout out Michael and his poo poo pants. I love that. I yeah. love that so much. And if you want to make us hit 1,100 subs on YouTube, please be that, be that last. Be that 1,100. We're looking for number 1,100. Uh, shall we get into news you can use? I believe so. I like that. All right. Coffee's ready. I think we're, we're, getting, we're wrapping up here. News you can use. Boop, boop, pants. Boop, boop, pants. <laughs> okay, we're ready. Right. <laughs> That's the cue. That's uh, beautiful. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going to talk. I wanted to bring up uh, Doug Ford. Dougie. Mr. Doug Ford. Oh, he's so dumb. <laughs> uh, the license plate renewals. Yeah. Are hopefully coming to an end. That's good news. Officially. That's a clarity that I think we all need. Yeah. Have you been confused with this stuff? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, the, the moment they said you don't have to pay for it, it was like, but wait, we have to register it still? Correct. And if we don't, we get fined? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. What's the, why, like, why do them out of, just do them together. Just stop all of it. <laughs> Makes no sense. Uh, I'm happy I didn't have to go and pay, but yeah, it's, it's painfully confusing. It's adding clarity. So for those who aren't aware... <laughs> For the longest time, you had to pay every year to renew your license. You get those little stickers. You got to sit in service Ontario for two hours. Yeah. Big waste of time. Then they were mailing it out during COVID. And I think around that time, he's like, you don't have to pay anymore. Like, yeah. it's around COVID, 2022-ish. Yeah, yeah. And now, you don't even have to register. No. You, you can just... It's not happened yet. Okay. So it's, it's happening. Happening. Uh, it's good. in the process of happening. So it, don't, don't get too excited. <laughs> so, yeah. My comment to why I thought he was dumb was um, family days this weekend. Okay. And he's not dumb for that. He didn't create family day. I actually like family day. It's a good excuse to have a day off. Uh, but fishing is free this weekend. Oh. Yeah. Who's going to go fishing in minus 10 degree weather? <laughs> yeah. Like, why don't you do it in like June or July? Like when the season opens, have the first weekend free for the kids. Get you, them out hold on. Do you pay for fishing? I have to have a license. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, like fishing. No, a fishing license is yeah. one thing. But you pay to get in the water each time you go? No, no, no. You, if you're caught fishing without a license, you get fined. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So it got rid of one and kind of freed up the weekend. But it's the worst weekend. No one's <laughs> going fishing in the middle of February. <laughs> like, ice fishing's fun, but it's not even been cold enough for a lot of the lakes to go. That's actually very true. Right? Yeah. So it's like, come on, Doug. Yeah. <laughs> you did so good with this license scrapping. Move fishing day to, like, July. I wanted to give one... I wanted to do one trivia question. Oh, I love trivia. Let me have some coffee first. Okay, yeah, yeah. let's do it together. All right, pick up. Enjoy. Oh, it's good. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so my one trivia question. I okay. Got. There's 15 million, around 15 million people in Ontario. Okay. How many do you think have expired licenses? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, 15 million in Ontario. I'm going to say... Adding my dad, my mom, um, all my friends who probably forgot. I'm going to say 1.7 million. Hey, actually, not a bad guess. Okay. I thought I, I would have guessed way more considering okay. that nobody's paying for it anymore. Okay. Um, it's about a million. Okay. Yeah. 
I actually thought it would, I, I was guessing like half the population is not doing this right now. I think why it's so high is because people don't know that they scaled back. Like people are still going to service Ontario thinking they have to pay. So they're there. So they just renew it. Right. Uh, true. Good Could point. Be could bit be a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, well, about one million. Anyways, that was my nice trivia question for this. Yeah, and I don't know if you if you dug if you dug deep into Dougie this week, <laughs> say that five <laughs> times fast. He also is banning tolls on highways, but not Highway 40, 407, which is the tolled highway. But all the other ones won't have tolls. I, maybe I'm missing the context here. <laughs> no, yeah, maybe like in Northern Ontario, there's tolls rolls. Tolls rolls. Hold. That sounds like an tolled, ACDC tolled song. Rolls. Oh, I guess maybe. Yeah, maybe Northern Ontario. Maybe, but like, I I was confused by that as well. Why, even then, like, who would be how how much congestion <laughs> would they would need tolls for to generate that type of? You good, very good point. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we'll dig a little bit deeper. Yeah, okay. All After right. the fishing story, I was like, I need a break from Doug. This is this is a lot, Dougie. <laughs> but thank you for scrapping the license plate. I think that's a, a move in the right direction. Yeah. Now just do this. Actually, he also wants to hold a referendum on the carbon tax. Oh. Which is a whole can of worms. We don't have enough time in this episode to get into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll leave that for another one. Sounds good. Uh, my contribution to this week's news you can use is, I guess, not the best news, but the property tax uh, hike has been approved. 8% plus a 1.5 city levy were a total of 9.5% increase for 2024. 2024. Just to break down what that's going to look like, you would have probably received your tax uh, property tax bill in the mail. Um, and that is last year's rate. So in the second half of the year, you're going to get another three payments you have to make. That will reflect the, the property tax hike. Gotcha. And little tidbit, in that package that they send you this year, they actually did include a letter reminding people to... <sighs> pay on them <laughs> or declare your home is not vacant thank you <laughs> i i sent out a newsletter this week and i got a very good response from people even after all the promo we've been trying to do like seriously we have to oh really eh? yeah. it's, still, it's still to the point of yeah people are still unaware it's still confused yeah. yeah we've been talking about it for quite a bit of time now and, and like to the point where we were talking to each other being like all right this is the last thing we're doing <laughs> we're getting sick of like push, pushing this, this message yeah <laughs> but i think it's obviously we're a very small segment of the media <laughs> landscape <laughs> but um, i think the media hasn't really talked about it much um and with two weeks left remaining for you to declare it hopefully they do start kind of reminding people pushing it a that little bit more little, yep, yeah yep, totally. i'm worried about the older people who aren't very tech savvy yeah that they might miss that boat or, but anyhow, hopefully, well, they'll hopefully get the mail, uh -huh, get the mail that comes in. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. But some people pay their property tax with their mortgage. Like the banks require you to pay it. Mm. Uh, so the banks will pay your property tax for you. And those people don't actually get that mail because it's the right. So I don't know. Just, just please do, do, do the damn thing. Do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> like, uh, and the cops also got their money. They got their 20 million bucks. Oh yeah. Cause there was like, they they definitely were funded properly, but they were saying they were twenty million short from what they required, right? What they requested, and uh, Olivia Chow and the council said, "Okay, fine. Here's your twenty million. Okay. So here's my thing: property tax. I think it's a necessary evil. Cops, you got your money. Yep. Now both of you deliver. I'm with you. You got a year to impress me. I'm all team. Take my money, but I want to see it go places now. I like that. And you're going to see a very angry. Mark the shark. If a year from now, <laughs> there's no change. Like we've not seen any type of shift or change. Very And if yeah. there is, hey, I'll praise the wins, but I'm going to be very critical of the losses because like, cool, here, here's an opportunity. Let's see what you can do. Deliver. Let's do it. Yeah. 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 Wow. I'm, I'm heated. I'm like, I like that. The espresso's hitting right away. Right? Oh yeah. People in Toronto <laughs> are angry. Well, let's get into something a little, <laughs> a little bit lighter. Pets and houses and rentals and condos and everything in the pet world. Yeah. We're talking, we're talking strictly if you are, if you are a pet owner, if you want to be a pet owner yeah, and you're, and you're shopping for a condo, what are some things to look out to for? Keep in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Some like simple points that are just going to kind of help you get through things. Uh, so the first thing I just, I'll, I'll kind of kick it off like yeah. that. Yeah. Or we've been having transition. Uh, roof, 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 roof. <laughs> transition time. That's my dog voice. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I remember it's one like of my a friends, cartoon, like a Blue's Clues kind of thing. One of my friends was like, "I think we're really close to dogs talking." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> With the right helmet, <laughs> yeah. Like technology is almost at the point where dogs can. And I'm sure if we dig deep, there's some product out there that can help you communicate with your pet. Yeah, <laughs> guarantee there's something out. We can clone them now. We can clone them. So you know, but we still can't talk to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's get into it. We're talking specifically about. So, I just mentioned this. Yeah, if you're a buyer, you have to you have to consider the fact that every condo has an opportunity to 
have a whole different set of rules. Right. So if you're shopping for a condo, you want to make sure that you're not going to walk into a, a fully pet restricted place or there's certain rules that your pet, even though you know you, you, it's not a pet restricted place, they might have restrictions mm -hmm. that prevent you from bringing your pet into it. Yeah. Uh, so that's the very first thing I want to mention. Yeah. And I would say when we're doing our buyer interviews, one of the questions we ask our clients is, do you have pets or are you planning to have pets? Yeah. And so if you fall into one of those categories, it's really important to tell your realtor that because they can then kind of keep an eye open and let you know about certain buildings that do have wild restrictions or more um, aggressive restrictions than others. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and it's important to, to figure it out. The, the way that it works, and I'll kind of go, so the restrictions work like this. They get written in, each condo has a set of three documents mm -hmm. and they get written within these three documents. There's the declaration mm -hmm. and then there's the bylaws and then the rules. Mm -hmm. I'll kind of push the bylaws and the rules together as one. The yeah. declaration gets put in uh, when a condo officially gets created. Yep. So in the beginning when the condo is finished, the developer writes a declaration for it. And that's the first. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in yeah. the declaration. That's it's like the holy Bible of the book. And yeah. then like the bylaws and the things are like, uh, you know, the priest telling you what the rules are to follow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great analogy. Good Catholic boy here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, and the way the declaration works is it doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be a reasonable request. Mm -hmm. So they follow the human rights code mm -hmm. and they follow the condominium act, mm -hmm. but it doesn't need to be reasonable. So they can, they can put things in like you're, you're only allowed one pet per unit. Right. Or there's just a straight pet ban, whatever the case is. Or a weight ban, a breed ban. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't need to, it doesn't have any, it need to have any rhyme or reason. It could just be like, this is the rule because this is what we said. Yeah. And I will say that I've, I've seen some wild rules in condos and they're all based on a bad experience. Mm -hmm. So from, you know, something terrible happening, like, okay, we need to change the way we allow things to happen in our building. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, second would be the, the rules and the bylaws. Mm -hmm. So I'll kind of jug, jug, juggle them in together. They're usually more the nitty gritty stuff. Right. Um, so there'll be things like, you know, if you're walking through the common areas, you have to be, your pet has to be on a leash mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, you can't leave your, your pet in a common area unattended. Like you can't tie them up to a pole and go to the grocery store or bring them to the party room and let them run wild. Yeah. Yeah. Just saying that's happened in my building. <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, so yeah, you, those are the three documents that are in the condominium. If you're purchasing, uh, usually you'll get the status certificate of that condominium. And this is where all the rules are set in. Mm -hmm. The easiest thing to do is before you even put an offer forward is just to ask management. Yep. Call the property management office. Yeah. Or ask your realtor to do so. Yeah. Uh, just get the, the lay of the land of if if your pet would be allowed in the situation. Yep. Um, if that gets through the, the courses, then you'll you'll get the status certificate. You put the offer through, you'll get the status certificate. You can put that, you can give that to the lawyer. And you can just ask the lawyer to double check. Specifically ask him, I've got this dog, this is the breed, this is the weight. Am I gonna have any issues in this building? One common thing I see is a limit. And I think you just touched upon that. Yeah. Like you can only have one or possibly two pets of any kind. Mm -hmm. So if you have three dogs, they have the right to technically tell you to remove one of them or, or leave the building. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's quite harsh. Like, yeah, not harsh, but it's quite strict. The rules that you have to follow that could be in place. Yeah. And not only that, but even exotic pets, like yeah. you might have a ban just on like, yeah, like you can't, you're allowed a small dog, but not a snake or yeah. the dog, like you said, the dog needs to be under a certain way. Whatever the case is like, you have to be aware of your personal situation going into it. One of the craziest pet thing I've ever seen in a condo. What? Um, rabbits. No rabbits? No, no. These people had a lot of rabbits. Oh, okay. I walked into, I was doing a showing and they're like, uh, be cautious of the bunny. And I'm like, oh, that's cute. Like a bunny, whatever. No, dude, there was like 15 bunnies running wild. In the, it, wow. in the unit. Yeah. It was disgusting. There was poop everywhere and there was no carpet on the floors because I guess the, the carpets were so badly damaged. They had to uh, rip them up. Oh, get out of here. They're rabbits on like concrete just running around. Yeah. 15 wow. Yeah. Wow. Was that, um, was that the owner that owned these rabbits or was that a, a tenant that was in there? Ah, uh, that's a good question. It was in the early part of my career. Okay. I think I walked out. I was like, not for me. Yeah. <laughs> Time to go. Um, and then in that same building, they, and this was a crazy part of it. They had a pretty strict pet ban in that building mm -hmm. to the point where your dog wasn't allowed to touch the common elements i.e. the hallways. You weren't allowed to touch the comments, so you had to pick them up? Correct. Oh, God. There was people walking out with golden retrievers. Oh, get out of here. I was like, <laughs> come on. Oh, my God. I don't know if that band's still in place. It was in Etobicoke building. It was like, uh, yeah, Etobicoke West End. Uh, and I would never forget this guy walking out with a golden retriever in his hands, and someone didn't, and like concierge was just 
all over them barking yeah <laughs> there you go <laughs> so yeah it, this this is a real thing in toronto this exists yeah this is, and that can that can hinder lifestyle like quite a bit absolutely yeah it's it's pretty messed up so and the, the rule the way that the rules and, and bylaws work is usually the, like you said there, there's an issue that happens right and then they're like we need to fix it right we need to fix the issue actually i don't know if you know this but you can you can dispute a, a rule or bylaw i didn't know that yeah you can you can dispute it if you if you um if you find that it's not a just situation. But you need like 51% of the building to agree. I, there's some convoluted... I was on the board of Chorizo and I remember like getting deep into what their rules and rights were. Yeah, I think like 51% of the building has to have a special election to say... Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty hard to change the bylaws. So 100%. So it, and, and for those that don't know, it goes... It's it's rules. So the hierarchy goes declaration, bylaws, then rules. Yeah. So the easiest thing to change is the rules. Harder bylaws and almost impossible the declaration. Correct. So uh, that's, how the, that's how this thing work so depending on where it is in the documents is yeah. where you can potentially but you, like you said it's it's probably very difficult to do so it's, in any it's difficult but you know if it's a, if it's a con- like i think that building was a little bit extreme to not allow pets to touch the common elements like yeah. clean up put maybe big fines if the pet damages it but come on you can't carry. no that's that's ridiculous yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> you're allowing if you allow a, a, a pet over a certain weight even then yeah <laughs> i mean you should at least at least do both you know yeah I mean? <laughs> figure it out anyways um okay so the Let's talk about if you ignored it. Okay. So you love Scruffy. You don't care about the rules. You're a rule breaker. <laughs> you bring in your 200 pound bull it. mastiff. What happens? Well, you got to move your pet out. <laughs> you got to move your pet out. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Yeah. Uh, so basically they can, um, depending on the rules in the condo, they can also fine you. Mm. Um, and that can be, I'm assuming that can be uh, put to your, uh, like you'll get levied, a lead on your yeah, yeah you'll get a lead your... and they usually start with a simple hey this dog is a nuisance uh followed by here's a warning letter followed by we're now giving you a a, a a fine yeah and if you don't pay that fine we'll put a lien on your property which is a pretty serious gig you gotta like you can't sell your place with a lien on it you have to pay that off yeah um and then it's the removal of your pet yeah yeah. So at the end of the day, it's either your pet goes or you and your pet you goes. You and your pet goes. Yeah. And I think like a lot of people think, oh, big dog is usually the general mindset of a problem. I think, no, I've had issues with very, 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 very small dogs that are yappy and never shut up Yeah. yeah. to the point where I know of a realtor who had this dog and she had to move out of the building. Yeah. Yeah. How ironic is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how that works. Yeah. If your dog is causing an issue, yeah, it's a hundred percent something to pay attention yeah. to. And it's not big dogs. It could be the little yapper. That's uh Yo quiero Taco Bell, man. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that dog, Chihuahua? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's so popular. You don't you even quero. see Chihuahuas anymore. Yeah. Where are those commercials? Yeah. Yo quiero Taco Bell, man. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Bring back the early 2000s. <laughs> um, so let's, let's, uh, so in the real world, what I'll say in the real world is this. Yeah. Uh, nine times out of 10, if you have a cat or a dog, that's un- just like a regular size, nothing like crazy. Um, you're probably okay. Sure. Uh, I'll, I'll say that. So it's not like, but you still want to be cautious of it. Yeah. We're not an anti-pet city by any stretch. <laughs> I think sometimes <laughs> pets have more rights than they should. That's a whole other topic. But, um, there are rules in place if you're pets and you do get out of line. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I wanted to talk about the landlord and tenants. Right, because that's so we're focusing in the beginning more so on like if you're purchasing, if you're purchasing, yeah, what happens. But there's a whole other world when it comes to tenants. Yeah, yeah, and this can get really convoluted yeah. because there was a change that happened somewhat recently that um, doesn't allow you to put pet bans in your lease agreements. And I will say, I'm going to just clear this up. I was confused with this. You help me. Yeah, because I remember at the very beginning of when I started doing this stuff, I was like, I don't understand. Where, where does the line get drawn? And I took a deep dive into it to figure it out. So the way that it works is this. If you're a tenant and you're applying for a place and you don't have a pet, um, you can, and, and, and the application goes through, you, you move in, and then a few months later, uh, you decide to get a pet. Mm-hmm. A landlord cannot actually evict you. Mm. They can't do anything uh, unless that there's a couple stipulations, mm-hmm. which I'll get into. But if just, you just ha- for having a pet, that's not a reason to be evicted. Yes, correct. If you have a pet and you are transparent about it to the landlord, um, he can or they can actually deny you your application. Got it. So that is something that you're allowed to do as a landlord. If you're not a pet lover and you want to get and you want to kind of stop a pet from entering a unit, you do have the right to do that. Now, again, if they don't have a pet when they start and move in. Buy one after the fact. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. 
It's a little bit of a trippy thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and if you put it in the lease to say, hey, you agree not to have a pet, that's that's the rule that they put that they changed, which is you can't put that you in. You can't there. put yeah, you you don't have a pet and you will not get a pet. Right. So you can't like after the fact put a clause in there saying that uh, if you do happen to get a pet, I can evict you. That yeah. doesn't that doesn't fly. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That's the that's the main rule that changed. Uh, Sorry, and let's just clarify. That's in general, whether it's a house or a condo, those type of um, scenarios hold true. Yes. And let's specify to the condos now. Now, if you get a condo, right. Here's where the, the change happens is, as you just heard, That's, if there's pet restrictions right. in the condo building itself, it's not even the landlord's choice that you can't have a pet in there. It could be the condo's choice that you can't have a pet right. in there. So if you do get one, yeah, you could be evicted just on the fact that you're breaking the condo rules. Right. So let's let's use a house and a condo as an example. So in a house, there is no bylaws declarations. It's just you and the landlord having an agreement. Um, bylaws don't really take it, take it into account. But in a condo, if you follow the same scenario, hey, I don't have a pet. Three months later, you buy a pet, but the board has a restrictions on pets. You can be evicted by the condo board because the bylaw says no pets in this building. Exactly. Exactly. And that's not even a landlord. That's not a landlord's choice. <laughs> that's the building's bylaws. That's rules. the building bylaws. So there are situations where bylaws supersede the actual landlord tenant board rules. Yes. Important to know that difference. Yes. Uh, and that's where, like I said, if you're working with buyers, but also if you're a tenant going out there, it's very important you're upfront with what your situation is a million to percent. your realtor so we can guide you down the path of making sure. Be, be transparent in general. Yeah. If you have a pet, I mean, I'll just say even just in terms of sleeping well at night, mm -hmm. like just be transparent about it. Trying to hide a pet from a landlord, like the, why should go through the stress? Just find this place that makes sense for you that actually is welcoming of your pet. Right. And you're going to avoid a whole lot of mess. Yeah. And let's talk about that for a second too, because pets are a big responsibility. I had a tenant, one of my properties who she never kept her pet on the leash the pet was running to all the neighbors, Italian neighbors' houses with well manicured grasses and peeing and pooing on it to the point where they all came. I didn't know this was happening. Yeah. They came to me and said, like, that you need to like stop this. This is ridiculous. It was a very hard process, but in the end, it came down to serving an eviction notice because I talked, I tried to plead, I asked, just put Wouldn't your dog on leash. I even had a fenced in backyard. I'm like, do whatever the dogs gotta do back there, but like please respect the neighbor's rights. And so even in a house, if the pet becomes a nuisance or you have multiple pets and they're loud and the neighbors are complaining, that could be grounds for starting the process for eviction as well. You, pets are responsibility. Yeah, a million percent. <laughs> and, and so this is actually, it's good you bring this up because this was, this was the, um, if, you, if you do actually want to get somebody evicted, yeah. if they have a pet, mm -hmm. there is the couple issues. And that's one of them yeah. is disrupting, disrupting mm -hmm. neighbors for a, a, a period of time. Yeah. You, can, you can make the plea to the landlord tenant board to evict the tenant. Yeah. Uh, which is, that's, oh, that's that case. Oh, my street was proper. Yeah. You know what? I, they sent pictures. They had video uh, cameras set up like behind the door. You see the door open a little bit and this old Italian lady's filming the dog <laughs> peeing on her. Oh man. And I appreciated yeah. it because I had no way of proving that it was happening. At least there was evidence to say like, you know, your dog is causing a nuisance to the neighbors. Please correct this. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't correct it, that that's the only option a landlord has is to start that process. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like that's, also, yeah, being a reasonable person is also another thing. <laughs> yeah, well, there was a lot of other issues going on in that era. So uh, reasonable was not something I was uh, very accustomed to with that tenant relationship. We'll just leave that there. But um, fines. Do you want to talk about fines? Uh, sure. Do we have a, a section on fines or am I just... Uh, not, on, not on fines if you're... I have eviction. Yeah. Uh, like eviction type setup. Yeah, yeah. Okay, was there a fine that took place? There... I, damages is what i was gonna be able to go after uh talking to the lawyer at the time they said like if the house is damaged from the pet so this is what i guess i was trying to get into pet deposits aren't a thing right you can't charge for a pet deposit in a rental ah, gotcha. but if the pet does damage to the rental you do have grounds to go after them for the damage uh this dog destroyed my front door mm. scratched the heck out of it like claw marks like it was completely ruined right and i don't know if you know the cost of a front door but it's like it cost three thousand dollars so, yeah. so i went I asked them, well, we split the difference on that one. But yeah, if uh, if the tenant's pet is causing damages, you do have grounds to go after them for that. Even though a pet deposit can't be requested, you still can ask them for money to compensate the damages caused. Yeah, yeah. So I'd be cautious about it too. Like, yeah, it's just, it, being reasonable makes a lot of sense <laughs> because yeah, it's going to end up costing you at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, or it can cost you pretty hefty. 3000 yeah. 3, bucks for a front door replacement is... Oh, th and that was the least of it. The, the walls were scratched. The baseboards were scratched. Like, it was a... So there was there was lots of grounds for this this eviction. Yeah, 
Three thousand was letting her off lightly. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. So, uh, so okay. So I'll go th- down the next on the list, and you're you're bringing up each topic as we're going oh. into it. So it's kind of working out. Okay. Really well. Cool. Yeah. Uh, which is the next grounds to evict, which is um, the pet causes damage. <laughs> ah, yes. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Lots lots of grounds for this eviction to like be completely okay. Yeah. So yeah, you can you can go after them for the damages. Yeah. And the thing that's important, you know, you be reasonable as well as a landlord or you, you do have to have evidence. You can't just be like, I don't like that you have a dog and I want you evicted. No, there's is the reasons why. And yeah. if you can't correct it, something's got to change. Yeah. Um, so make sure you do have proof of it and not just a blind, you know, statement of, I don't like the dog. I want them out type thing, <laughs> dog yeah. or cat. Yeah, exactly. And like you can speak to the tenant, but at the end of the day, it, you'll have to go through the landlord tenant board uh, and convince them that this is, this is a problem. The last eviction I'll, I'll bring up is, um, the, the pet needs to be considered dangerous. Mm. So there needs to be some type of incident that happened that proves to be dangerous. Yep. Again, you can you can try to speak to the tenant, but at the end of the day, the tenant doesn't need to do anything until they get a, a written notice mm. from the landlord-tenant board to be evicted. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I think that process is not really fair to both sides because if you've got a, an animal, it doesn't matter, dog or cat, that's attacking people, Yeah, like we have to wait for the landlord-tenant board to say this is a problem before someone else gets mauled or hurt. The landlord tenant board has its own has a huge set of issues right. in, in itself, and like it shouldn't be any conversation shouldn't be eight months or nine months down the road because that causes so much one sidedness. Yeah, and like this is supposed to be a thing where we come to fair agreements yeah. with each other, and this has now just become uh, people are using that to their advantage. I, I, I'm here to make a deal with Doug Ford. Doug, if you're listening, <laughs> you could take away free fishing day if you can fix the landlord tenant board. <laughs> I will pay for everyone to fish that day. <laughs> <laughs> All four people. I'm, I'm so on board with that. Honestly, put put license plate renewals back in, and I'm game for yeah, fixing yeah, the limit. Yeah. Kind of if, if paying for license plate renewals <laughs> gives you more funding to to just speed up the process of the landlord tenant board, take my money, please. <laughs> Charge me more property tax. Heck, I don't care. Uh, yeah, that's a that's a big issue, and like you know. I will say this. I've got a great set of tenants right now. They're all very reasonable and understanding. Things always come up, but you know, you just sit down and you talk with them. We're able to kind of reach a, an agreement that's somewhat fair for everyone, I guess. Yeah. But um, you know, pets are a very sensitive thing, and I think both sides need to have a little bit of understanding. If your pet is a nuisance, do expect your landlord to come down and say, like, you know, this needs to be corrected because reasonable enjoyment for everyone is something that should be a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. Um, yeah. It's a, it's it. Like. When you think about it logically, it's like, yeah, if you're if you're if your pet is making it causing issues, then like just it's it's being a pet owner at right. the same time. It's not even like I'm gonna I'm gonna stick it to my landlord of right. any type. It's like no, just just there's other people in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and this is where I think it's a little unfair. Like if I own a house and I have a pet and my pet causes problems and someone calls calls three one one, they're there instantly. Yeah, right. And you know he made society. Not I don't know if it's he made society, but animal services can come to be like your dog did this. We need to take it away. But when it becomes a nuisance with a tenant, it's like this whole longer process one has to go through. So I don't know. Something needs to be looked at there to be a little bit more streamlined. Yeah. And just a better a yeah. better system in general. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you have a dream pet? A dream pet? Yeah. Probably. What would it be? I would do the Justin Bieber monkey thing. He has a monkey? He had one. It was really? Like he made news headlines. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> I, did, I think the only thing I know about Justin Bieber is he peed in a bucket once. That was like yeah, that w- that also made new. Head- it was all in the same era yeah. when he was just causing oh, havoc, just yeah. peeing and having yeah. a monkey. Yeah, like, come on, man. <laughs> um, not because of Justin Bieber though, but I do love monkeys. You do love monkeys? Yeah, all all day. So if I would have a you know a dream pet, yeah. I would have a pet gorilla, no question. A gorilla? Yeah, a million percent. <laughs> that's kind of badass. <laughs> 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 Sounds crazy, but that's actually pretty pretty badass. When we uh, on the honeymoon, we went to Bali, and there's this thing called the monkey forest in Ubud. I don't know if you want a monkey after walking through that forest. Oh, really? Eh? Oh, they're they're, dude, there are a lot of bananas. <laughs> we saw a monkey. <laughs> we saw a monkey. So the forest is like a pretty big forest. It's like a sanctioned forest. You pay a, a thing, you walk through it, but the monkeys are free to do what they want in there. Yeah. And uh, they also like live around the forest. Like they're not contained to it. They're free to leave the forest if they want. And they would go into town and they stole this one monkey, <laughs> stole a whole thing of bananas. It was like Jum- a cartoon. Jum- Jumanji vibes. Oh man. <laughs> He's running off with the bananas and all of a sudden a shopkeeper, he goes, trip the monkey. I'm like, nah, I'm not tripping no monkey. I'm on my honeymoon, bro. <laughs> he, he came out with a bamboo stick and hit the monkey. And the monkey dropped the bananas and ran off. 
I swear to God, ask my wife. I was like, this is wild. So be careful what you wish for, man. A gorilla, I don't think you could smack it in the bum and it'll listen. Oh, no, no, no. They'll all shred you to pieces. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, even chip, like chimpanzees are like, apparently painfully strong. Like they're little short things, but like they can. Their strength is. Their strength is next level. Yeah. yeah. If they wanted to, they can just like. Rip you apart. Just literally take a limb off. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, don't mess with monkeys, yeah. man. No, I was, I want like a turkey or something. Can't fly. It's pretty. It's got good eyesight. You're 100. <laughs> Turkeys have really good eyesight. You found a different bird that I, I didn't expect that. And like the if, turkey of all birds, like at the end of it, you get hungry. You can eat it. <laughs> like at the end of its life, it's like you're not throwing a carcass away. You can make something out of it. Right? <laughs> Too far? No, that's good. That's good. You I mean, can't eat a gorilla. I mean, you probably could. It'd just be very like uh, gamey dense, and dense mus- meat. muscular. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wouldn't want to eat a gorilla. Um, yeah, turkey would be a cool pet. I also just want to fish. Your dream pets. <laughs> Both of your dream pets are just a fish. Yeah. Is I there would, a specific fish that you would want? No, I'm good with a little fish. Oh. It doesn't need to be like a killer shark or nothing like that. Like just a nice. I want an aquarium. <laughs> I've come so close to getting saltwater aquariums. I know I've talked about this before on the show. <laughs> That's true, actually. Yeah. On Marley, they have a, a coral place to sell. For, like that. Why can't all tenants have corals? Yeah, <laughs> easy and low maintenance. I'm with you with the aquarium. They thing. don't bark in an in a, in, a, in an apartment like a glass wall of yeah. aquarium. I'm I'm on board with that. I'm not even thinking that big. Give me a little like modern cube. Let me put my be- beta fish in there and let them like do their thing. I just want fish. <laughs> The wife won't. Maybe today I'm gonna go get fish, <laughs> <laughs> but I won't go salt water. I'll just get a simple fresh water. Keep tank. It nice yeah, salt water is a lot of work. Are they? Oh yeah. Do you have to keep the tank cleaner? Or like- oh, dude. Every time I get to the point of almost buying it, they remind me of why I stop. I'll need a whole separate tub with a filtration system and a salt water pumping. Thing. Oh, that's like, a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm in a loft. I don't have. I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna kill them. I don't want to do that. My brain, when I think of aquariums, it goes to Deuce Bigelow. Mel Mel yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, 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 he drops yeah. that aquarium on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't want that big. I just want like a little modest aquarium. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna like, get a fish bowl. I think that's what I'm gonna get. <laughs> Keep it simple. Get yeah, a fish. Fishbowl. Um, we had hamsters as kids, and they would run in these balls, the little hamster balls, hamster balls, but yeah. like the what, like gladiator style. Yeah. And this my one hamster, I called him uh, Chippy. Chippy always escaped, and we had to go on a goose hunt. And you just see like this empty ball with Chippy on the loose. Like, oh no, where's Chippy? Yeah. <laughs> Chippy's a great name. You yeah. know, what my my dribble name was Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan. <laughs> yeah. How and why? Uh, well, I I said I love Jackie Chan. Same. Yeah. I I watched. Probably his main movies like were like <laughs> on repeat when I was a kid. Favorite Jackie Chan movie? Um, ooh, um, what's the one called? Ha- uh, happy, happy? Oh, no, no, happy, happy. No, I'm forgetting the name of it. I forget the name of Mine it. Mine is Rumble in the Bronx. Rumble in the Bronx is a great one. Oh, yeah, Rumble in the Bronx. What is the one I'm thinking of? Happy, happy something. Is it with he has one with Arnold Schwarzenegger, the Dragon Tamer or something like that? No, it's, bad. No, no, it's no, really no. bad. No, no, no. It's one of his like first ones. When I had the illegal uh, TV box, yeah, and there was a Jackie Chan channel. Yeah, he's got a he's lot got a of Jackie Chan channel. Well, on the illegal boxes, like yeah. someone was just streaming Jackie, <laughs> Jackie Chan twenty four seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking. I'm trying to look it up. Happy. I'm not. Familiar. Oh, you know what's another good one? Shanghai Noon was a great movie. Oh, is that the Western one? Yeah, the Western. When he one. drinks in the tub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. Uno mas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does he say Uno Mas? Uno Mas, yeah, with the bubble. Oh, I don't remember that. Uno Mas, yeah, they keep playing. They keep playing the drinking game over and over again. I don't remember that one. <laughs> What's this happy Jackie Chan movie? Okay, I got to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jackie Chan. We're movie. on a wild tangent. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what type of pets do you think Jackie Chan has? He probably has some exotic. He's pets. got some crazy stuff. Yeah. No question. Did he's you probably about- got stuff he practices his moves with? Mm, I feel like he's a lover of pets. He wouldn't put them in harm's way. He seems like a very modest guy. A million percent. Yeah. yeah. Did you know he's about- a singer? Oh, of course he is. Yeah, yeah, he's a singer. Yeah. Come on, Joey. No I pressure. I can't find here. this freaking movie. Can I talk about another famous person? Well, infamous person in their pets? Yeah. Pablo Escobar. Okay. His hippos? He had hippos? Pets? Dude, he had a zoo. Hippos are dangerous. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is the problem. They're like an invasive species to Brazil now. And they're like, they've bred and they, are, they have a hippo problem from, Hes- from Escobar Zoo. Yeah. And like apparently there's potentially money hide, hidden in the zoo from like all the cocaine money he had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a cool thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hippos are insane. Also, they fling their, they mark their territory by, did you, did you know how they mark their territory? Their ding dong? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> no, they, 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 their feces. Oh. And they, they, they wag their tail. So their feces just spread everywhere. I mean, logical. 
<laughs> I would want an advisor. If I had a tail, listen. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I what I'd be doing. Not going that far, but okay. <laughs> uh, I can't find the name of this movie. I feel like I was trying to say Rumble in the Bronx and it wasn't. And for some reason, in my head, it was. What's it, the premise of this happy Jackie Chan movie? Is there a girl that's stolen by the triads? Because that's Rush Hour. <laughs> no, 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 not Rush Hour. <laughs> no, no. It was an older movie. And I'm pretty sure it was. It might have been Rumble in the Bronx. I remember him getting run over by like a big inflatable. Oh, the hydroplane. Yeah. The boat. Yeah. It's not Rumble in the Bronx, but it's that era. What is. It's, what not, is, it's not called Happy. It's though. Happy something. <laughs> uh, the Nice Guy? Mm, I feel like that's an Adam Sandler movie. Mr. Deeds. <laughs> there is a there is a Jackie Chan movie called the is that, if that's Jackie Chan, it's called The Nice Guy. Um, we'll link it in the show notes. I'm going to link it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, Joey's gonna just, going to get to the bottom putting, of this. But let's get Barpin on this. <laughs> Final strike? No. I no. We're not going to keep. All right, we'll, we'll we'll just put that to bed for yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> we'll we'll get back to you on that one. Point we're trying to make in this episode in this long-winded story about Jackie Chan and Joey's favorite nostalgic well, that was movies. Probably the longest tangent. <laughs> <laughs> is that you do need to be cautious or conscious if you have pets. You yeah. do need to make your realtor aware of it, and we need to do our job to ensure that Scruffy, Fluffy, Snakey, Lakey, and all the other turkeys that you want out there, Joey's gorilla, uh, is pet permittable. Yes, and that, you don't have to carry them out the door within it, through the elevator. You could carry a gorilla. You specifically, Joey, can carry a gorilla <laughs> on your back. Oh man. Is that a challenge? <laughs> episode 50. <laughs> yeah. Joey carries the gorilla. We're getting close. We're at 40, we're eight away from episode 50. From episode 50, yeah. 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 We're almost at, what, 52 marks the quote unquote the year. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Well, it won't, yeah, not yeah. really, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, 52. I think March is, is our one year anniversary, like of when we started the podcast. That makes. We got to look into that. A lot of sense. Um, episode 50, Joey versus a gorilla. Oh, we're just going to do a straight up fight. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just Joey versus gorilla. No, no actual gorillas will be harmed. Maybe I'll come dressed up as a gorilla. And yeah, you, can, you could fight me. <laughs> <laughs> no, please don't. Um, all right. Well, let's maybe just wrap it up there. That sounds yeah. like a good spot. Uh, yeah. Next week, we're going to do something interesting. We're going to do uh, on location. Yeah, we are. We're going to start exploring the culinary scene a little bit deeper. I like so it. Stay tuned for that one. Yep. Who knows what fun we'll get into there. A <laughs> million percent. <laughs> all right. Any questions about pets, reach out to us. Happy to help. And uh, enjoy the episode. Yeah. Did you say that at the end? No. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Be our 1100th follower. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There, that's over yeah, there. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Any shout outs? Um, shout outs. Shout outs, Maddie Matheson. <laughs> Maddie Matheson. Fack from. Uh, Fack. From Chef. From um, The Bear. The Bear. Thank the bear. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carmen. I keep calling a chef too. Yeah. 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 Um, shout out Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know how we didn't make any references to. I have of, no idea either. Yeah. All righty then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the Toronto Living's Real Estate Podcast. You could find more information on how we work over at Toronto Living's with an S dot com. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter to get price reports from over 150 different neighborhoods in the city each and every month. If you got any value, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And if you made it this far, thanks for listening.